University of Alabama in Birmingham. My name is Lee Naves, and it's my privilege this evening to serve as moderator for the program. We have two very special guests. One is Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanen, who is an African anthropologist, an educator, an author, and a scholar. He's on my right, and on my left is Dr. George Simmons. Dr. Simmons is also a professor. He was born in the St. Croix, Virgin Islands, USA. And we will discuss a number of topics this evening. These gentlemen are here to talk about African origins. As you know, in America, Black History Month is celebrated every February. Without further ado, let's get right into it because I know they have some interesting viewpoints that will stimulate your thinking, even if you disagree with them or agree. I'm going to call you Dr. Ben, if that's okay, because I understand that's what people usually call you. Yes. One of the more controversial positions that you take is that black Africans landed in America 2,000 years before Columbus. Uh, I would uh, not specify the, the day, but probably exceeding 2,000 years. The fact is that Columbus never came to the United States of America or North and South America. He came as close as San Salvador. Uh, there's a rumor that says that Columbus came to, United, to, to America. He did not come to America. He came to an island of America. Vespucci came to America, not Columbus. He came to the Caribbeans. But it is commonly stated, just as much as they state, that Columbus discovered America while the Indians sat down watching him doing it. Now, but uh, all the, the, the knowledge of Africans in the Americas uh, quite knowledgeable to scholars. The fact that it's suppressed doesn't have uh, any validity at all. Let me bounce a couple of things off of you. One thing, this article that I'm going to be referring to, to our home audience and to our studio audience, this article came out in the September 19, issue, 81 issue of Science Digest, and it's entitled Black Kings in Ancient America. You and some other black scholars believe that these people, African people, came to this continent before Columbus. We don't believe we know. How do you know? What the, evidence? The evidence is there. For example, when you go to uh, Central America, the Yucatan Peninsula, and uh, at Ecuador and places like that, they have catches of uh, Carthaginian money found 200 feet down in the ground, meaning that there were preluvial disruptions and those money was buried. So it, it indicates a period of time at least from that when you look at the stratas, you could tell the period of time in which they've been here. And when you're talking about Carthage, you're talking about at least 212 BC when Carthage was finally destroyed by the, by the, by the Romans. Uh, again, the Queen, uh, Queen Makeda, uh, which you call the Queen of Sheba, there are maps which Rome, the church in Rome, the so-called Holy Father, has suppressed these maps from the time of Justinian, showing South America and what is today called Central America. The maps there and, and Victoria, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Makeda goes back to at least 892 B.C. Before Christ. Before the, let's let me point out another thing, just from the same article. I don't know if we can see this on television. But here is a picture. Tell me what this is, and why do you see this as proof of the presence of Africans in America before? That is the Columbus. head of an Olmec, a, a, a Olmec. And the Olmecs were said to be the first of the indigenous Americans. And uh, if you look, if an Olmec walk in here, then you would believe that he had come from the middle of Africa. And there is no doubt about it that all of the writers prior to racism admitted that the Olmecs were in fact Africans who had come across here. There is no doubt when uh, Pignafetto and others, the point is that Van Sotoma is writing and others, but Leo Weiner in 1938 at Harvard University wrote a two volume book for which he was fired about the Africans at Olmecs being Africans. And well, let me bounce this off of you, okay? You take the same statue, mm -hmm. you say, well, you say that they're obviously black African. features, yes. thick lips, broad nose. Mm -hmm. The stereotype. But, okay, other, the stereotype. Other anthropologists say, I think Michael Cole was one of them. He says that this is not a black man. He said the people who made these statues, which I understand are eight feet high, the people who made these statues didn't have sharp enough tools to give them white features. So they're not really black statues, they're white people carved with crude tools. What's your response to that? It's strange that the tools were not sharp enough to make narrow noses, but it was sharp enough to put eyelids. 
So it would seem to me that an eyelid is harder to make than a tin nose. But uh, Michael Cole is no less a racist than the head of the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, what's the difference between Michael Cole, Reagan, and the Ku Klux Klan? It is, it's have the same philosophy. What is the difference between the fellows writing the Bible and write about the Queen of Sheba asking, I mean, saying to Solomon, uh, look, uh, look not, ye daughters of Cade, look not upon me because I'm black. My parents sent me in the vineyard and that's all this nonsense. She's black because nature made her black. Her mother and father were black. That's why she's black. Had nothing to do but going in any vineyard, even though it's in the Bible. Okay, you talked about religion. We're going to get to that in a while. Let me turn to Dr. Simmons. You also agreed with this position that Africans were in this... I have no problem, no doubt. Why? As a matter of fact, speaking about, uh, like Dr. Ben mentioned, uh, and you spoke about Michael Nico, I owned a book several years ago and still have it in my possession by Michael Nico himself, who is considered one of America's leading archaeologists and anthropologists from Yale, one of America's most prestigious schools. In his own work, he referred to them as Negroid. And he went farther to state the title of the book is America's first civilization, what he calls civilization. And to turn around and to tell these youngsters and other people in America in particular that the black men were the first to build any type of civilization in the Americas will be disturbing to Americans. And so... Let me ask you this. Yes. Even if you're right, let's say you're right, what difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference. What kind of difference? It takes the inferiority complex out of the black man who felt that his only beginning and relationship here in this part of the world is that of slavery. Then it puts him in the driver's seat because, again, they don't tell you that there are man-made hills within the United States. They call them mounds. And they range from in the Midwest all the way down the eastern sea coast of the United States. And they have found artifacts in them that are similar to things found in West Africa and in Egypt, which is Northeast Africa, that predates the arrival of the so-called indigenous Indians to these lands. Another thing is some years ago, one of the major television networks back in New York, I don't remember exactly which one, ABC or which, had did a documentary. And they said that these Almecs are the ones who brought right into the Americas about 3000 BC to tell blacks that they ought to be glad to enter into these schools of higher learning today in order to read and write, because their ancestors back in Africa couldn't read and write. You, you see how, what it will do to tell them that they brought right into the Americas? Antonio Pegavetta that Dr. Ben mentioned, who sailed with Magellan when Magellan came to the so-called New World in 1519, when they landed at the land of Virgin, which we now call Brazil, they were m met by people in canoes that carried as many as 40 people. And Antonio Pecavetta recorded that these people were jet black. It seemed that they came out of uh, the infernal marshes. That meant that they were burned. He said, naked and black as they are in 1519, 27 years after Columbus's arrival to the so-called New World. Another thing they don't tell you, again, you heard my associate... Well, why haven't we heard these things before? Why don't we read them in the New York Times, the Birmingham News? Uh, if I stole another man's country, and I brought your ancestors here to work for me, could I tell you how great your ancestors were and still expect to keep you in slavery? Well, well let, me, let me give you a better... I'm not better necessarily, but an added situation of that. Uh, most black people in Birmingham, Alabama, like in Harlem, New York, are Christians, and they go to a, in a black community, a black minister, a black congregation, but with a white Jesus, because they didn't know that, the, that Jesus, up until Pope, Mar, Pope Julius II, had the first black Jesus painted. He had Michelangelo to do it, but up until that time, the world worshiped the black Madonna and child. It, it, okay, the present open. Pope is going back to Poland All right. to worship at the statue of the black Madonna and child. That's in the New York Times. But what the Times says the next day, don't worry about the black Madonna and the child. She was originally white, but there was a storm in the 16th century passed by and, and, and turned it black. 
But the same storm must have gone to Spain and then it went to Ethiopia and it went to the Soviet Union and turned all the black Madonnas back. It was a hell of a storm. <laughs> but, okay, let me just, let's get together here. I mean, we're jumping around and I think we're going to have a beautiful, interesting hour. Okay. Because right. this subject, I was going to get to this later, but since you opened it, let's deal with it. Okay. Well, you're in the Bible Belt, gentlemen. I, I heard so. You heard so. And I must tell our audience, we had dinner together earlier and we... <laughs> We got into this a little bit, so I, you're going to hear some interesting things. Because you guys are taking issue with a lot of what we grew up with in the Bible as fact. And you're telling me that's not so. You got a it picture. Is. That. What is. I brought it right here. What is Before picture? I show you the picture you right. wanted to see. Right. This is Pope Pius XII right. in his private chapel praying to the Black Madonna and child and right. all the popes of Rome Where'd you in get their that? private, this from the church, it's the right. Roman Catholic Church itself. 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 I just got rid of the copy of the history of the Black Madonna last night. I brought one copy. Uh, it's published by the Roman Catholic uh, Order of Nuns called the Daughters of St. Paul. And they said that the picture of the Black Madonna and child in Poland is reputed to have been painted by St. Luke. Now, St. Luke is said to have been one of Jesus' disciples. He ought to know what Jesus had looked like. So if he painted a black woman and child, who am I to say that he wasn't? Besides that, however, in Anacalypse, so, so now you guys one, are saying Jesus was black? We're we not saying, saying that. It's we, what it's, has been written until the, up until the Nicene Conference of Bishops in 325, when Rome, under the order of Constantine, the Roman Emperor, ordered the 219 bishop at Nicaea, and they took away Christianity from 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 the Africans. Just remember that before they said Jesus was born in a manger in Bethlehem, they said he was born in a cave in Ethiopia. It was at the Nicene Conference that changed that. Let's go further. That Wait a minute, let me be sure I'm following you now. Uh -huh. You're saying that the birth of Christ as we know it mm -hmm. is not accurate. It's a farce. It was only you in... You realize what you're saying? A farce, a lie. You know what a lie is? A lie is a lie. <laughs> the person who wrote that at the Nicene Conference of Bishops in 325 AD, Constantine, the Roman Emperor, ordered a conference be held because Rome wanted to take over Christianity from the people who started it. Christianity was started with Pantheus and Boethius in a place called Alexandria in Egypt. And Egypt is in Africa. I saw it up to January the 9th, it was there. You talked about that a little bit last night in your lecture. There was a lecture last night, Dr. Simmons, here on campus. You talked about the separation of people don't want us to see Egypt as part of Africa. You talked about the historical thing about blacks being in Egypt as well. Can yes, uh, what, what I did last night... I don't want to get away from the other point. No, I, no, I just I just, I just say that what, what, what happened is that I dealt last night the fact that Herodotus, that the, the institutions of higher learning, white institutions, considered the father of history, he himself, when he visited Egypt around 450 B.C., almost half a thousand years before Christ, said that the Ethiopians, the Egyptians, the people of cultures, which is uh, part of present-day Turkey, were people of black skin and woolly hair. All right? And so I just want you to understand that the Egyptians we now see are conquerors, just like people who came here and took this land from the Indians, so that they're not indigenous to Africa, those who now rule Egypt, and Egypt it's just as much a part of Africa as Birmingham or Alabama is part of the so-called United States. Let me add 